Good morning and welcome to Farm Factor. I'm your host, Jamie Bloom. On today's show, Dwayne Taves is joined by Justin Talley from Oklahoma State University. Then enjoy this week's Kansas soybean update. Next, Kyle Bauer and Billy Brown from the Kansas Department of Agriculture are talking dairy. Then it's this week's Kansas Farm Bureau update and we'll end with Plain Talk featuring Kyle and Dwayne. Stay with us. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome to Farm Factor. Up first, Dwayne Taves is talking about flies and ticks in cattle with Justin Talley from Oklahoma State University. Dwayne Taves joining you once again with Ag AM in Kansas. A chance to catch up with Justin Talley with Oklahoma State University at a recent field day. And Justin, you had the task uh, talking about uh, insects, uh, flies and ticks uh, to cattlemen uh, here in north central Kansas at this particular site. And uh, it really kind of universal here through the central plains. When it comes to the summer months, uh, our, our cattle uh, with uh, cow-calf pairs or stalker cattle, uh, they've got some nemesis out there that, uh, that are going to reduce gains. Yes, that's correct. You know, one of our main nemesis is ticks, and then the other one are horn flies. And so when we look at horn flies, we're looking at how many are going to make an impact to those animals. Uh, for growing cattle, such as stalkers, we know that if you're above 200 to 300 flies per animal, then it's going to ha have an impact on weight gain and also the performance of that animal. So what we try to do is develop management plans because it's really hard to get rid of all the flies, but we try to manage the flies. The other thing are ticks. Ticks are both a uh, what we consider a vector carrying disease agents uh, as well as just causing uh, just performance impact on the animals and as well most of the cattle producers to the Central Plains are having issues with ear ticks and so ear ticks have become a major problem both for Oklahoma and Kansas and so that becomes a, a dual threat in terms of parasite management of external parasites on, on cattle. We think about uh, dealing with them, uh, a, a number of different options, uh, each of them having their own aspects that are uh, beneficial for us, uh, but uh, oftentimes it seems like a combination of, of uh, modes of action and weapons to attack probably is the key. Yeah, you're correct. Uh, we have a lot of tools out there, a lot of products out there, uh, but it all comes down to modes of actions and how, how we use those products. Some products are out there that are persistent for short term. Some are persistent for longer term, such as ear tags. So what we want to try to do is uh, manage these horn flies so we don't develop resistant flies. And so when we do that, it, we take into account uh, application type and then the, the chemistry it's in. And so the chemistry relates to the mode of action. And so with the mode of action, what we're doing is it has a target site. And with that target site, it's what that chemical is targeting to kill the insect. And so when you switch up the chemical classes, uh, it, it's like a shock to the system. And so essentially what, they, what happens is if they have resistance to one chemical class, you can implement another chemical in a different chemical, different chemical class that uh, can uh, essentially kill that fly. We think about uh, other options as well, uh, feed through products, uh, porons, ear tags, sprays, dust, all of them have their application, as you referenced, but, uh, but making sure that uh, we rotate things. Uh, we hear an awful lot about uh, resistant uh, populations. Yeah, so we have a lot of application techniques. So when we look at application techniques and resistance management, so we have to ask the question, how long is that product being exposed to the flies? And so if you have a product such as ear tags or whether it's in a, in, in a different kinds of ear tags, it's the persistency of that product. And so what we have to do is rotate those on a year-by-year -year basis. You can't do sh short-term rotations with those because uh, you could develop uh, cross-resistance. And so what we try to do is a rotation on a year-by-year -year basis. And right now you have a three-year rotation with ear tags, one with organophosphates, Another one with pyrethroids, and then Latin, well, the third year could be with an, what we consider an abamectin, uh, which is a macrocyclic lactone, so similar to ivamec or cydectin-type products. 
The other issue with uh, like dust or sprays or oilers is, uh, you know, if you rotate those, you can do those in a more frequent uh, case. And so you can start off in May with a certain chemical class in a dust bag and then switch to a different chemical class in a, in a spray. Our thanks to Justin Talley, Oklahoma State University, joining us here on Ag AM in Kansas. Jamie, we'll send it back to you. Thanks, Dwayne. Folks, come back after these messages for this week's Kansas Soybean Update. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com. Kim Mandarin with Hardy Insurance. I'm here to help you with all of your farm and ranch needs. When it comes to protecting your operation and your family, you need a name you can trust at a price you can afford. Call me today or visit hardyaviationins.com. This segment is brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Welcome back to Farm Factor and the Kansas Soybean Update. This is the Kansas Soybean Update. It's brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Jen Galloway, Competitive Exhibits Director at the Kansas State Fair, is joining us. And Jen, coming up during the Kansas State Fair on Tuesday, September the 11th, is the Invent a Heart Healthy Food Competition, which is being sponsored by the Kansas Soybean Commission. Can you tell us more about the event? This competition is a way for us to showcase the use of heart-healthy soy products. The exhibitors can enter a food that they have used at least half a cup of a soy-based product. It's a great competition to display the importance of Kansas soybeans from the farm to the table. And in the entry information, they have a list of soy foods or soy products that they can use during the competition. They must have a pre-entry that is required for this. That date is by August 15th. And other than that, the only requirements are they are pretty simple. They have to have a proof of purchase showing that they have purchased some soy product. And then they have to provide us with a recipe that shows how much of that product they use. There are three options for entry, the dessert entries, the main dish or entree, and the quick and easy snack. And for the judging criteria, how, how are they going to look at that? Uh, I, I would think one would be the use of soy products, but what else are they going to be looking at? That is correct. They also are going to look at the flavor of the finished product and then the ease of preparation based off of um, the recipe that they turn in with their entry. And you usually get pretty good number of entries into this as well that usually also get some really good recipes too. We've had some good recipes in the past. We do keep the winning recipes and then the fair and also the Kansas Soybean Commission can use those to make um, cookbooks so that other people can try making those, these um, healthy snacks and foods. Once again, it is Tuesday, September the 11th, the Invent a Heart Healthy Food Competition sponsored by the Kansas Soybean Commission. And if they'd like to enter, what is the best way they can do that? The best way is for exhibitors to go on our website at kansasstatefair.com. And as an exhibitor, they'll access the food competitions and they can do either an online entry or a paper entry. And again, the deadline for that is August 15th. All right, Jen, we appreciate your time. Thank you very much. You have a good day. That is Jen Galloway, Competitive Exhibits Director at the Kansas State Fair, who joins us on the Kansas Soybean Update. It's brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Learn more at kansassoybeans.org. For Kansas Soybeans, I'm Greg Akagi. Hope you enjoyed this week's Kansas Soybean Update. Stay with us after the break for more with Kyle Bauer and Billy Brown. What if sustainability were synonymous with U.S. soy? If energy efficiency, water quality, and soil health help define U.S. soy's value, that future is here, the time is now. To meet end-user demands, the Soybean Checkoff is committing to sustainability that's achievable, worthwhile, and enduring. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. 
All over the country, more and more communities are making the change to biodiesel, made from U.S. soybean oil. And the decision continues, improving the health and welfare for millions of Americans while adding billions to our national economy. KFRM is one of the largest farm radio stations in the nation, dedicated to informing and entertaining rural listeners from northern Oklahoma to southwestern Nebraska. You can catch KFRM in many ways. Of course, 550 on the AM dial, streaming at KFRM.com, or on your smartphone by going to the TuneIn Radio app, or on Ag AM in Kansas on Tuesdays, and Facebook every day of the week. KFRM, tune us in. You'll be glad you did. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. This segment brought to you by SureCrop. Liquid crop nutrition delivered right to your farm. We're back. Now we learn more about the growth of the dairy industry in Kansas with Kyle Bauer and Billy Brown with the Kansas Department of Agriculture. Hi, this is Kyle Bauer. I have the opportunity to visit with Billy Brown. He is with the Kansas Department of Agriculture and Agribusiness Development. We're going to be talking dairy for the most part today. And truly, when you talk about agribusiness development in Kansas, dairy comes out as a shining example of a big success. Absolutely, Kyle. It is really a phenomenal story that we have to tell uh, in western Kansas, especially where we've seen a lot of dairy growth and the fact that dairies add so much economic generation per unit of water that we produce. They're in some cases one of the top tax providers in the county and they also put a lot of children in our schools uh, while creating more economic value per unit of water. It's a great story that we have to tell and, and it's a growing industry and we're hoping that continues to grow. So what is the key to helping that continue to grow? Well, as we heard today in our uh, breakout session focusing on dairy, one of those key things will be working on immigration reform. Uh, immigration is obviously something that really impacts our industry quite heavily, and, and if we can know that we'll have a good supply of laborers that are typically uh, of more immigrant nature um, and not at risk of losing those uh, with some political upheaval, uh, that will help us out certainly uh, a lot. But we also have to overcome some quality of life issues uh, in our more rural areas when we're recruiting talent and make sure we have some good housing for those employees and, and also able to uh, go ahead and, and be able to have some other quality of life things like pools and good schools and uh, places to shop for those families and workers that will be here with us. There's uh, ground that has been broken for a new plant in Garden City. Tell us about that. Yep, uh, that is actually a Dairy Farmers of America plant. Dairy Farmers of America is one of the largest cooperatives in the United States, and they will be building a whole milk powder facility um, in Garden City, which will accept, I think, about 2 million pounds of milk per, per day produced there in western Kansas, which is a, a great opportunity for us. They're going to extract the water from that, make the whole milk powder, and it's going to be destined for export. So we're going to be feeding people uh, across the globe with this whole milk powder. So where's that milk going now? Uh, currently, it goes to a variety of locations, mostly out of state. Uh, at the current moment, we only process about 25% of our milk within the state's borders. Uh, when this plant is done, by our estimations, that will increase to 75%. So that's huge. As it currently stands, a lot of our milk will be shipped to uh, other states to the south of us, numerous hours in some cases to the southeast United States, you know, Georgia, Florida, Alabama. And, and so that's a, a long distance to be shipping that milk. And it is high quality milk uh, that we're able to sell down there, but we just like to process it here and capture that added value. You know, it is kind of a bit of a jigsaw puzzle, though. Uh, you you build a plant that makes powdered milk, and then you have to ship that to across the world. So you have to have transportation, and you have to have labor for the dairies. There's a lot of pieces to put together. Sure, it is a big jig jigsaw puzzle, and, and we're really working on that. And, and I know there are exciting things going on uh, in Kansas related to rail and, and that ability to help us increase export of our agricultural products that we have, including this milk powder. And uh, so as we continue to work on that, we'll continue to realize that our ag products that we produce in here are really serving the global community. And that's something that we underestimate a lot of times. 
We're visiting with Billy Brown. He is with the Kansas Department of Agriculture. Kyle Bauer reporting. Back to you, Jamie. Thanks, Kyle. Come back after the break for this week's Kansas Farm Bureau update. I had this horse, it was a good horse, except when the wind was blowing above 30 mile an hour. Wind was blowing about 35, 40, and I saddled him up, rode him out to the end of the lane, and I thought, well, he's doing pretty good. And about six jumps later, I was laying on the ground and thinking, boy, my shoulder sure hurt. I kept waiting, and it, it didn't get better, and so I went to an orthopedic surgeon, and that showed that I had torn rotator cuff. And said, well, I have to do surgery. I, I farm and ranch by myself. It's not going to work out very well. I'd been sleeping in my recliner for about two and a half years because it hurt too much to sleep in bed on my side. And I'd heard about Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center on the radio. Got down there at 8 o'clock in the morning, and by 11.30, the procedure was all over. They just took some fat out of my side here and spun that down for about 45 minutes and then injected it in my shoulders, and I was on my way. It's something you don't hear about, but I thought it was worth a try, and I'm really pleased. It's, it's really worked out well for me. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Fort Wallace was the fightingest fort in the West. Fossils, Indians, soldiers, scouts, wagons, trails, pioneers, stories. Discover the story of Fort Wallace and the people who served here, the people who fought here, the people who settled here. Wallace County, where the past is present. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org find us on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to Farm Factor and the Kansas Farm Bureau update. Farmers do appreciate that the administration recognizes the impact that recent tariff battles are having on agriculture, especially on commodity prices. Dale Moore, American Farm Bureau Federation Vice President of Public Affairs, says while farmers wait for aid details, they would much rather see the tariff disputes resolved in a way that opens vital overseas markets to American agricultural goods. U.S. exports of agricultural crops can reach 70% for some commodities like cotton. For some of the wheat along the Pacific Northwest, it can be as high as 60%. Soybeans has kind of been front and center uh, in terms of the impacts on this, and China is one of our major markets. In grain sorghum, earlier this year, actions related to China and uh, the impacts there. We had grain sorghum producers lost a $900 million market. There are still questions regarding how farmers can tap into the aid package, including what kind of information they'll have to provide. Moore says USDA officials told Farm Bureau that they hope to have more information in the next couple of weeks. We don't know exactly what information they're going to be looking for, but a number of the programs are going to work through the Farm Service Agency offices out across the country. A number of the programs are also going to be operating out of the Agricultural Marketing Service. So right now, what we don't know are the details of how sign-up is going to go, what information you as a farmer have to bring to the table, but we're certainly going to be monitoring that closely and getting that information out as soon as possible. USDA will help farmers through a food purchase program. Officials tell Farm Bureau that they'll make every effort not to disrupt ongoing business. What we also know is they've made it clear they're going to be very careful not to interfere with normal marketing and purchases out there, so they've got a lot of work to do on that front as well. We're looking forward to the tail end of August when the Federal Register notice is published so that we can get into some of these details. Chad Smith, Washington. Stay with us. We'll be back after the break with Plain Talk. I'm Sarah, and this is my husband, Travis. We both grew up working on family ranches, me in Northern California and Travis in Kansas. We met in college, got married, and took corporate jobs in the beef industry. 
but soon we realized we missed the production side of the industry. So we made the daring move to start our own cattle business in Southeast Kansas, while also starting our family. Watch our story and the stories of other young Kansas food producers at kansaslivingmagazine.com slash meetafarmer. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. As fourth generation farmers themselves, Heinen Brothers Ag Service understands the risk and rewards of farming. So when it comes to quality aerial and ground application, fertilizer, ag chemicals, and anhydrous ammonia, call Heinen Brothers Ag today, 800-760-4964. This segment brought to you by Kansas Corn. Learn more at kscorn.com. Welcome back. Now let's see what Kyle and Dwayne are up to on Plain Talk. Hi, this is Kyle Bauer with Plain Talk with the Dwayne Tate. It is. I am here in person in presence. President. With your fact or fiction question of the day, yes. Kyle Bauer. Uh, the uh, bolt of lightning relative to the sun, six times hotter. Fact or fiction oh that can't be to the surface of the sun bolt of lightning i will tell you this morning there was one must have hit the deck on my house <laughs> about 5 45 rattling bang things around oh, the window oh my gosh well that rattling banging with just me bouncing off the <laughs> walls holy smokes that thing was close yeah you know the sound got there before the flash that's not yeah good. that's yeah can't um, really even happen that seems that can't be right i'm gonna go with fiction it says it's true ah. i don't know how you would measure the temperature of a bolt of lightning just me like what are you gonna do Stand well you want to have thermometer? an assistant yeah you we're going to have Bob, co college, hold, <laughs> college intern, college intern, yeah. Bob, Bob, please hold the thermometer in that lightning storm. Now stand out in the field <laughs> with, with it above your with head. With a metal rod. Yeah. Do not do yeah. this at By the way, do not take this as suggestions. No. Right. If you do. By no means. Darwin is absolutely needed to kick in. <laughs> Possibly. A crude net farm income. Crude. Cr a crude. A crude. A crude. Not crude. So you're talking an accounting term. Yeah, okay, just net farm income. Thanks. Yeah, there you Make go. Make it easy for me. Net farm income. Uh -huh. The last few years, everybody knows, has been good. Okay? Until, until recently. Until 2015. Yeah. And by the way, these numbers are collected by the... Uh, USDA NAS? I don't think so. I think no? it's the um, oh Kansas State Farm Management Group, isn't it? Oh, what? I don't know what numbers you have, but they do collect numbers. I have forty five eight forty five hundred and sixty eight dollars. That's what you have? Yes. Why? Well that's what that's what I thought they had too. No, I it's written on this paper. Oh. So it must be right. That's what okay. the average is? Yes. For Kansas. For Kansas. Right. All right. Excellent. Yeah, average for all of Kansas farms. And NAS could not have generated no. 2015 yet. I'm sure that's where they come. By the way, the year before, 128,000. Oh. Year before that, 140,000. Now, by the way, I'm going to remind everybody though, this is also in most cases the income that family lives out of. Sure. So last year they lived out of forty five hundred and sixty eight dollars. Yeah, that's yeah. They didn't do that, no. right? So they went backwards. Um, the highest year is 2011 at 166. But it had grown grown precipitously. You're surprised I could even use that word. That's a big word. It is. And you used it appropriately. Thank you. So uh, from 2006 on, it grew At precipitously. Rapid 2008 rate. was a tough year nationwide. Because Not of? on the farm. 
Well, that was the big, oh, the year the the big recession. recession. But not on the farm. We didn't find that in farm country. No. We didn't know how to spell recession. Had we not gotten national news out in the farm country, we wouldn't have even known there was a recession. Right. So, And it did spill over because it kept interest rates low, which was... Beneficial. Good for farmers, yeah. and therefore it brought up their farm income as well. Thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Jamie Bloom, and I hope you enjoyed today's show. See you next week on Farm Factor. Closed captioning brought to you by Egg Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at eggpromosource.com.